conference or an event. And by the way, say hi in the chat if you're watching on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, I understand if you're putting on a great conference and you don't want to give it away for free on social media. I, can, I get that. But there are ways to actually monetize virtual tickets. And we're going to talk a little bit about virtual tickets, building a conference to be live streamed, the power that that gives you for additional monetization for conferences and events to get the word out about what your conference is all about. And of course, learn a lot along the way. We have a free online course and more. Michael, let me know when we're live on Facebook and YouTube. We are. Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Richards. I'm with the Stream Geeks, and we live stream every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Today, we're talking about live streaming conferences. We are hosting a conference in New York City called the Stream Geeks Summit, and I am very excited to go over exactly how we're live streaming. Hi, David Simon on LinkedIn. Thanks for letting us know you're here. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Daniel Wright. Hi, Gene Greenwood. Thanks for joining in. All of this and more is going to be coming up in just a minute, so stick around, everybody, and we're going to get into it. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Stream Geeks Live. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Hi, Gene. Hi, Dan. Hi, David Simon. Hi, Kyle Gunderman. Thanks for joining, everybody. This is going to be a super fun show. I wanted to kick off the show by thanking our backers on Kickstarter here. You can see that Dean, Meg, Kenny Hampton, Mary Spangler, who has a brand new business she's launching, and she wants to be a sponsor. You can see she donated $1,000 to help us create this very first live streaming summit of its kind in New York City. It's called the Stream Geeks Summit. You guys got to check it out. Go to our website at streamgeeks.us and you'll see it right there on the homepage. Stream Geeks Summit is going to be a full day of live streaming education with tons of pe people. Let me show you guys a quick 60 second video to show you guys what it's all about. I wanted to learn more about the live streaming industry. Well, we just signed a contract to host an entire day of education on live streaming right here in New York City. The first annual Stream Geek Summit will be held here at the Dream Downtown Hotel. We have experts from all over the industry that are going to join us here to teach workshops for a full day of education, help simplify the tech, and provide action plans that can be applied to almost any industry. That's right, and you can join us in person or virtually. You know that virtual ticket experience we're going to produce is going to be amazing. So learn more at streamgeeks.us slash summit. Couple shout outs to my friends watching me on watching us on LinkedIn here. We've got Giuseppe, David Simon, Syvert. If you're watching on LinkedIn, let me know because I think it's so awesome, this new platform that we're doing here. So first of all, thank you everyone that's backed our, our, our project on Kickstarter. You can see we're already fully funded, so this is happening. Wanted to share a couple cool things about the Stream Geek Summit before we jump into our main presentation, which is going to show you how we're live streaming the Stream Geek Summit. Super excited about that. But we have two authentic New York City influencers who are using live streaming to change the game. And I'm so excited about that. I cannot wait to have Ariel v Vieira, the urbanist, who has over 35,000 followers that he takes through New York City on historical tours. He's going to take everyone who has a VIP ticket who supported us here, right here on Kickstarter, uh, from the Dream Downtown Hotel on Thursday night on a historic tour of the Chelsea, New York City area. Then on Friday, we have the whole Stream Geeks Summit, and there's going to be a Stream Geeks meetup afterward. And Mickey, I forget her last name, but her, her Facebook page is New York City Live with Mickey. She has over 100,000 followers that she takes around all the modern things happening in New York City. She's going to take us through the Chelsea west side of Manhattan 
and then take us through the Chelsea market to a few places that are modern and hip while we do a Friday night Stream Geeks meetup. So that's some cool stuff that's happening. Let me take you into how we're streaming it, delivering it to thousands of people in the world who can't attend and fly out to New York City. So hi, Stuart, by the way. Hi, Stuart. How are you? Hi, Javier from Spain. Thank you so much for taking some time out of the day to learn how to live stream a conference. I'm really excited about this. Did I mention, by the way, that the author of Disruptive Marketing, Jeffrey Colon, is going to do our keynote speech. He is the director of marketing at Microsoft. So I'm super excited about this conference. And I want to show you guys how we're going to live stream it. So uh, I, the very first conference I ever live streamed is a conference called Bid Summit. And at VidSummit, I helped Daryl Eves. It's a very popular YouTuber conference in Los Angeles. And by, able, by allowing him to live stream the event, he was able to add hundreds of thousands of extra dollars of revenue to his conference um, just by live streaming and recording everything and making it available on demand. And through that process of working with Daryl, actually, I created... A uh, this is a Udemy course. Can we show this full screen for a sec, Mike? Um, this is a Udemy course that I created. It's called. You can search for private live streaming and selling virtual tickets on Udemy. You can take this course for free using the coupon code Virtual. Just wanted to throw that out there because it is a really great course, and we show how Daryl Eves at Bid Summit was able to add hundreds of thousands of dollars to revenue to his conference by selling virtual tickets. So don't be afraid of live streaming your conference. People are still going to be able to come. Hi, Dan Strafford. Dan is looking forward to digging into LinkedIn Live. Just got approved and he's been appreciating our streams thus far. My pleasure, Dan. We're having a great time out here. And look at this, doing it with Jason. Went to Vid Summit last year. Who'd you get to see, Jason? I'm really excited to hear that. You could have watched it live from home, and that would have been interesting. And tell me this, Jason, did you purchase the on-demand video option? Because the interesting thing with Vid Summit and what, a, what they were able to do is they have like three different workshop areas and a main stage area, and you simply can't go to all of them. So a lot of people opt to pay the extra $100 to have the on-demand video option of all of the courses, which I do as well. So let's get into it. And uh, let's start by how we're going to be live streaming this. So I want to zoom out completely here to just show you guys the overview of this space. This is Google SketchUp. And you can see from a top view here that there's a main stage area, which is very common, right? There's a main stage area here. And then there's two classroom areas. I guess I should mention Tess is not here today. Tess had to go uh, take care of something important. So it's just me today. And there's two workshop areas. There's an A workshop area and a B workshop area. Workshop area A is going to have, you know, uh, this is very common to have bre smaller breakout sessions for in-depth, unique learning. And, and workshops A is going to have high level, kind of like live streaming 101, audio 101, social media 101. And then on the right-hand side over here on this side, we are going to have uh, more advanced uh uh, sessions that are like more like lighting, virtual sets, audio production, cabling, architecture, camera settings, things like that, all taught by some really great professionals. It's all on our website. And this is very common. So in site A and B, I'm going to try to use my Telestrator here and see if it works. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow. So we've got site A here, like I said, and then site B. And then we have the important main stage. Look at that. My Telestrator is working. Yay. All right. So let's take a look at the main stage streaming area. In workshop area A and B, we're just doing recordings and we're going to post those later. And if you're an event manager or someone you know working with an event planner, you don't have to stream everything. That could be a little insane. We're just streaming the main stage event. And we're charging uh, premium tickets on Kickstarter. You can support us for just $25 and get access to all of those on-demand recordings. And that helps us pay for this event that is not cheap to put on in Manhattan, as you could imagine. So let's start by looking at the main stage area. 
So the audio visual is obviously one of the most important things. There's a projection screen here, right? So we've got this really nice projection screen, and that is about 20 feet wide, and that is fed via an HDMI connection to uh, our, one of our backup video production systems running our PowerPoint slides. Up in the front, which we'll take a closer look at here, we have a podium, and we have five microphones. We're going to have a total of six. One microphone uh, for each presenter. We have a podium microphone, one for each of our presenters here. And then we also will have a wireless microphone that we'll hand out for Q&A as well. Now, the thing that is new for a lot of people out here is not the in-room audio. It is the live streaming portion of all of this. And how do we manage and talk to all of these people that are watching online? How can we make it engaging? As you can see here, you know, I've been chatting with all of you guys here who are watching, and it's such an important part. Jason did not get the virtual pass. He mostly just wanted to catch up with friends. I gotcha. I, I get it. That that makes a lot of sense. And um, you know, that that the in-person networking is so important. It's so powerful. That is why you have to pay a lot of money to go to these events because you have to rent space and everything. But if you're going to engage a 1,000 people, which I really hope to have over a 1,000 people watching this live stream, we're working with a company called Amp Live. We've got a lot of influencers helping us advertise this out, and we're going to be streaming on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. So I expect a cumulative audience of at least a couple hundred, I'm hoping a 1,000. How do we engage and interact with all of these people? What if they have a question that they want to ask to the audience? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How do we live stream this entire event? And how do we interact and engage with the audience so that the, someone can really ask questions and, and uh, to these real people who are up on stage from the live chat? So how do we manage all of that? Well, we're going to look into that right now. So first of all, you can see from an audio perspective, everyone gets a microphone. There's a podium. And here's the view kind of from the podium there. So that, that's what it looks like when you're up on stage. Oopsie daisy. There we go. That's what it looks like when you're up on stage and you're looking out at the audience. And that, that person has a microphone there. And then each one of our panelists as well. Now you'll notice we have a PTZ Optics remote pan tilt zoom camera over here in the back. And the idea there is we're going to have one 30x camera that can really zoom in from almost 100 feet away to capture the stage straight on. And one of the things you have to remember when you're using re remotely controlled cameras with a lot of optical zoom is to use a really good tripod. It, when you're zoomed in a lot, if there's somebody shaking or if there's anything shaking on the floor, it'll, it, it'll be very apparent. So you want to have good optical zoom, but you want to have a really high quality speaker stand, not just a regular camera tripod. So that's one little tip there that we're going to be trying to remember as we balance all of these balls of everything that's going on at the summit. Now, the next thing here that you can see is over here we have our streaming area. And we're going to take a closer look at that at a, at, at a moment here. Um, but camera placement is something that I want to briefly talk about and tackle. You can see here that there are two giant kind of posts that are um, in the middle of this room. And you know, at, with every uh, challenge is an opportunity, right? So these posts are challenging for when we're laying out our tables and chairs, but they also provide us with the opportunity to put a camera in a place that's not obstructing anyone's view. So we're going to put these cameras right in front of the posts, and then we'll have left and right uh, close-up shots for our moderators and our panelists. And we get to actually get up a little closer as opposed to trying to shoot everything from the back room. The closer you get, the less shake there will be and the further you don't have to zoom in as far. Chad is asking if this is going to be an annual deal, and that is absolutely the goal. Uh, we're really hoping that we, we make this a super special event where everyone can watch online, but people in person get to take these beautiful tours of New York City. I really think it will become an annual event for sure. Thanks for asking that, Jordan. I can't wait to work with you, by the way, um, that project that we're working on. So let's keep rolling here. Now, the, here is the streaming area. 
Now, one of the things that's super important about having an event, especially if you have people paying to watch this live stream, the stream can't go down. This is a very important live stream. Uh, you have advertisers, you have sponsors, you have people paying for this content. You need to have a system and a backup system. So you can see here we have two systems, okay? And I'm gonna go over the wiring diagram with everyone and I'd love your input because I know some of our folks in our audience are more technical than myself, uh, but I think everyone will agree that having a backup system is a great plan. Always have an extra system uh, connected and ready to take over if your stream dies. Now, the other thing we're doing, which is incredibly important, and we've done videos on this in the past, is that we are going to be live streaming to the cloud, which has a redundancy portion built in. And I might do a little bit of whiteboarding to explain that. Hi, Stuart. Stuart's saying first of many annuals for sure. Stuart, I know, supported our Kickstarter. Thank you, Stuart. And he purchased his ticket. So again, props to you, Stuart, for being a really a supporter of this conference. It, it takes, we cannot do this alone. We won't do it alone. This is, this is a, definitely a lot of people are putting this together and coming together to do this. So not only do we have two systems, but in the cloud, we can have redundancy. And what that means is we can have one stream up to the internet and it streams to the cloud before it goes to Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. I don't think that this is gonna be one where we're gonna to stream to Twitch. We're just gonna to try to manage those three core platforms. LinkedIn, because this is a lot of business to business, high level marketing thinking that we, we think will do really well on the LinkedIn platform. Facebook, because it's the biggest, best place on there. We have a lot of Facebook influencers we're working with and the shareability there is incredible. YouTube, because we know our audience and everyone seems to like watching on YouTube. We get higher numbers on YouTube because the viewing experience is probably the best on YouTube than anywhere else, especially if you have that YouTube television app. So we're trying to cover those three as our basis. But what if for some reason the power goes out and you know the live stream is cut? Well, because we're managing everything in the cloud, the cloud is not going to go down. The cloud can't go down. If the cloud goes down, we have other problems, right? So the cloud will actually show a message saying, hey, please give us a moment. Houston, there's a problem. But the connection to YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn will remain strong. So that is a very important part of this to, to make sure that even if we have a temporary issue, it will still fall back to a redundancy screen. We can create a short little 60 second video that says, hey guys, you know, this is the Stream Geek Summit. If you're seeing this video, please join us in the chat. We might need technical support. Uh, we're gonna get it up as soon as possible. Here's, you know, it's, you can really customize that redundancy screen. Hopefully that video or image will never get shown to the audience, but if it does, it's better than having the, the stream cut completely and you lose all of your audience right before, you know, right at, at the crucial time. So David Simon saying, what backend are you using? We are using a backend called Go Easy Live. In fact, I think this would be a great time to show it. And I'll just show it right now. So let's show this full screen, Mike. And I'm, uh, I might need to just zoom out just a hair, but there it is. This is our cloud-based streaming solution. So a couple things that we can do. One is we can have multiple RTMPs managed in the crowd, in the cloud. And uh, we can, you can see here, there's like a program and an output. Um, on the publishing side, you can see we're going to LinkedIn, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So that's how we're probably gonna plan on doing it. We might not go to Twitch for this. And we can have that redundancy screen and that fallback. So that's really important. That's a company called Go Easy Live. We can also do overlays even on stuff like mobile. And I should mention there will be an easy uh, a LU600 from LiveView being used for our internet connectivity. We will not be using internet from the venue because we all know how that can turn out when you're you know trying to uh, rely on the venue who says they have something for you and they do not. So here's our camera here. This is our 30X that's going to be in the back of the room. So we're gonna have four remotely controllable cameras with one joystick controller. So there will be one camera operator 
with four cameras. One of the biggest issues with live streaming conferences, and the reason why most people simply don't do it, is because they get a quote for $100,000 and they go, I can't afford this. I got a quote for $15,000. And I said, are you kidding me? That still seems like a lot. Um, now, there's good reason to use an expert, obviously, and I highly suggest that you do. But the expert that you work with, ask them if they have an option for PTZ cameras so that instead of hiring four people to operate all four of these cameras, we can hire one using PTZ camera presets that zoom into a position and maybe move around a little bit, you know, go to from person to person on stage, but doesn't, you don't need to have real camera operators for every single stream unless it really is a super high end event, then you would need that. There is a reason for that you have to have real camera operators, but for a co most conferences, it's about the content. It's not about the television production quality, even though we're going to put on a great production and people are going to enjoy that and stay engaged and share more likely because they're getting a free television production, high quality presentation. I think that is very important, but we're doing it on a really low budget and allowing to just have one single camera operator for the entire event. So coming over here, you can see here's our second camera. This is our audience camera, okay? So this camera is going to shoot out into the crowd. So when the crowd picks up a microphone and someone has a question for the audience, we have the ability to pan the crowd, zoom into that person, and show them on camera as well. We really want the audience to feel like they're there and have views that might even be better than actually being there because that is possible when you have these type of cameras. And then we have, again, one more camera here. Let me pan up a little bit. You can see we've got this camera here, two of these flanking on left to right so that we can kind of get those cross shots. And then, as I mentioned, we've got two classroom areas. These are just going to have projectors on the wall. And these two classroom areas are going to be recorded and available for anyone who helps us support this event and purchase a premium ticket. Thank you everyone who's been helping us out here. I really want you guys to know that it means a lot to me. We can see here, Dean just, just helped out. Thank you. We now have 30 backers. This conference has been made happen by 30 people. 250 are going to attend. I know there's a lot more people out there who are going to try to jump on board. There's only 20 days left to get these early bird tickets. Now, time to look at, thank you for sticking with me, guys. Time to look at the actual wiring diagram for the conference. So here it is here. This is how we're planning on setting up the summit. So interesting stuff going on here. We have four PTZ Optics cameras, as you just saw. But in order for all of those cameras to communicate to all the different places that we're planning on communicating to, we need to have an IP network. Hi, Ross. Thanks for, for help for chiming in here. Always fun. Hi, Matt. Hi, Morgan. Hi, who's this? Uh, I love how I can just jump on everyone's page. Hi, hi Morgan. LinkedIn's so great that way. Um, and hi, everyone, for joining. Uh, here's David Geckler who's saying, interesting, you have a Yamaha 01V in your setup. I helped develop that a million years ago. Thank you, David. That is not the actual audio mixer that we're using, but uh, it was just available on Google SketchUp. Um, the actual audio mixer is, I think, something in that neighborhood. I can't remember what it is. Uh, so this is actually, this press, This what we're looking at right here is just video. Audio is another beast, and I'll have to tackle that in another presentation because this is as far as I've gotten. But we've got four network-connected PoE cameras. So we have four cameras all connected to PoE Ethernet switch that we do not need power at these locations. We just need to get an Ethernet cable to them. So they're all controllable over a joystick. So again, that one camera operator. And they can all communicate with all systems because our network router, and this is kind of important, this router here is multicast enabled. And what that means is we can bring video into our Wirecast gear. Tentatively, we may be using a Wirecast gear. We may use a TriCaster. We may just use a custom computer with vMix. I haven't decided that yet. But we can send video 
to two places at the same time just over IP. And that's important for our redundancy here. We are going to be running SDI from every single camera directly into the tried and true SDI hardwired video switcher, which is our main system. In a perfect world, nothing will go wrong. That's all we'll use is the SDI video connections. And that's all we'll need for video. Ethernet will just be used for controlling the cameras. But um, you forgot your network loop. Oh, yes, the network loops. I apologize. Uh, I need to kind of whoop over the little networks. I, I appreciate that. Uh, that's funny. Um, keeping me laughing here, Chad. Thanks for the, the comment there. Forgot my networking loop. Now, the TP Archer V3, this is an, a gigabit network switch that supports IPTV and multicast, again, allowing us to send all of our video to all as many places as we want on our network, as long as the throughput put is under a gigabit, which it will be. So our backup system over here is just using the new tech NDI IP video streams from these cameras. So these cameras go through the switch to our streaming box all over IP, and that provides our backup system. So if this first system dies for whatever reason, boop, we switch over to the producer kit. It's already ready to go, and it's, it's doing its stuff. Now, our presentation PC down here is actually from a company called Wolf Vision. Wolf Vision is one of our sponsors. They have a product called a Synap, which is a really cool wireless presentation collaboration streaming box. And that presentation, that's going to allow us to do wireless presentation uh, with all of our guests. Plus, it's going to plug into the HDMI of that projector. We're going to use a Magewell Pro Capture frame grabber that will capture that and loop it through to the projector and send it back over to our, our streaming PC. So our streaming PC can show presentations, but it can also show, obviously, all of those four cameras. So that's how it's... Uh, <laughs> That's how it's going. And uh, here's another question, from, uh, comment from Chad. You're not going to let it, not going to roll the dice with NDI. NDI is incredibly reliable. Uh, so many people out there are using all NDI for their entire production. But I want to have a backup, tried and true SDI. NDI has a backup. Once I pull this off, um, I'll feel much more comfortable doing all NDI for my system. But right now, it seems like a perfect solution for a backup. This, uh, this system right here, We'll have one Ethernet cable connected to it, and that's it. That's all it needs to be a four-camera switcher with camera control and complete ability to be a backup system. So that's a high level of how everything's connected. There's more to it than this. There's joystick controllers. There's the whole audio side of things. There's lighting. Um, there's a lot more to it, obviously, but I wanted to give you guys a high-level look at how we're planning to stream this event. And then I wanted to let you guys know, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, that I have an entire course on private live streaming. Uh, you can look, search for, you can search Udemy for private live streaming and selling virtual tickets. This is a course I worked with Daryl Eves from the Vid Summit on in actually 2017. It's been a little bit, little over two years now. Um, but that is how, that is a, a free course you can take with coupon code VIRTUAL, all caps. And it goes over the process of live streaming or selling virtual tickets, how we did it at Vid Summit. We will not be uh, selling virtual tickets to this event, just premium tickets for the on demand content that's recorded everywhere. So that's it. Now we will go ahead and answer questions. Thank you, everyone who joined today Mike, David, Ross. Chad, David Geckler, uh, Stuart, really love having you guys all here. And um, that's our show. We Tess is not here today, so we'll just we'll go to Q and A in just a moment. Thanks, guys.